This tutorial initially looks at the use of fuels and how they can be evaluated in terms of how much energy is given off per gram and then looks at the um, amount of fossil fuels that have been burned in the world and why that's increasing. Later on we'll look at the combustion of hydrocarbons, how we can show that uh, carbon dioxide and water vapour produces products and be able to write balanced symbol and word equations for combustion reactions. This shows the details of a classic chemistry experiment that uh, is used to burn fuels, notably uh, alcohols, in a spirit burner and measure how much energy is given off by measuring the temperature rise of a fixed volume of water. So it uses what's called a calorimeter. Now this is a calorimeter, it's a copper can and that's clamped at a height which is just above the height of a spirit burner and into that is measured a hundred cubic centimeters of water which weighs a hundred grams. So that goes into the copper calorimeter um, and then the thermometer is put into it and measure the initial or start temperature of the water. At the same time, um, another member of the class would normally go and weigh this spirit burner with the lid on and come back and write down the mass of it. And then when everything was ready, we would light the burner and heat up the water in the can until it reached, say, 30 degrees above its initial temperature, at which point we would uh, put the cap back on the burner we would weigh the burner again to find its final mass and therefore you can calculate the change in mass or the amount of fuel that's burned and also after stirring the water in the calorimeter take the final temperature of the water so you could calculate the rise in temperature in degrees celsius using the results of the experiment it's possible then to work out the energy which is transferred to the water by burning the fuel using this equation which is in the physics part of the specification and should be printed on the exam paper so there's no need to remember it but you do have to remember certain things about it first of all the energy is measured in joules that's the units used the mass of the water on the chemistry part we normally take in grams so that would be 100 grams of the water heated and then the specific heat capacity, which is in joules per gram per degree C, would then be 4.2. And the temperature rise would be the temperature rise of the water in the can. Now, if we use an experiment where we use the same volume or mass of water in each case, then the mass of the water here would be 100 grams of water. The specific heat capacity would be a 4.2 and the only thing that would vary would be the temperature rise. In the experiment you'd expect to get a set of final results, maybe a little like this. Inevitably the temperature rise in each case isn't exactly 30 degrees, so here we've got a temperature rise for the ethanol of 25 degrees and for the propanol of 32 degrees. So in order to work out the heat supplied by the ethanol to the water in the calorimeter, we use the equation. Now this is where many students make a fundamental mistake and it's easily made that when they look at the mass they think about the mass of the fuel that's burned and not the mass of the water that's been heated. So in the first case for the ethanol the mass would be 100 grams because that's the amount of the water that was heated. The specific heat capacity would be 4.2 and the temperature rise in this case would be 25 degrees. And this calculates to make an answer of 10500 joules or 10.5 kilojoules of energy transferred across to the water. In the second case for the propanol, the mass again is 100 grams of water, the specific heat capacity is 4.2 and the temperature rise in this case is 32 degrees. 
and this comes to 13.440 joules or 13.4 kilojoules. Now looking at those two results, it looks like the propanol is the better fuel, but of course you've got to consider that the propanol has burnt more fuel than has the ethanol. So in order to make a proper comparison between the two fuels, it's important to look at the amount of energy that's been produced per gram. That's a summary of the results of the experiment. Now in order to work out the energy release per gram we need to use an equation. And this summarizes the equation we need to use. So looking first at the results for the ethanol. Here the energy released is 10.5 kilojoules and the mass of the fuel burned is 0.4 grams. So that means that 26.25 kilojoules per gram have been produced. Now we'll do the same thing for the propanol. Here the energy released by the propanol was 13.4 kilojoules, but the amount burned was 0.5 grams, so that comes to 26.25. 8, 8 kilojoules per gram. So looking at those two figures, the propanol is the better fuel in that it produces uh, slightly more energy per gram of fuel burned. This is a past paper question. It says that this question is about fuels. Jody and Natalie burn two fuels. They compare the energy transferred. Look at the diagram. It shows the apparatus they use. And lo and behold, there's the copper can or calorimeter, the spirit burner, and the two fuels, propanol and ethanol, both of which are alcohols. Part A says, explain how Jody and Natalie can compare the energy transferred by the two fuels. Your answer should include the name of the liquid in the copper can, how they could make it a fair test, and the measurements they would use. In your answer then, you would want to say that they would use water in the copper can and in order to make it a fair test they'd use the same mass of that water in the can each time for example 100 grams. In terms of the measurements they'd make you might say the mass of the spirit burner before and after heating the water or the temperature of the water before and after heating and you might also mention uh, although I mentioned that earlier the volume or the mass of the water in the can uh, either could be used because 100 cubic centimetres of water weighs 100 grams anyway. This second question is uh, quite similar. Uh, Phil wants to heat his greenhouse. He decides to test four liquid fuels to see which fuel is the best to use. Look at the diagram. It shows the apparatus he uses to measure the energy given out by these fuels. And uh, funnily enough, there's the same diagram of the same copper can and the same spirit burner with the fuels in. Look at the table. It shows his results. Phil decides to use fuel C to heat his greenhouse. Evaluate if this is a sensible choice. Well, initially it does look like Phil made a good choice because the fuel burnt is the cheapest. It costs only 0.5 pence. So we might write a sentence to summarise that. However, what he may not have considered is that this only gave a 5 degree temperature rise, whereas other fuels gave 15 or 20 degree temperature rises. So the next thing we must do is look at the temperature rise for each of those fuels. When we do that, it starts to look like, in fact, B is better because B gives us the highest temperature rise. So we might make a statement to that effect. However, what we must really do is to work out what is the temperature rise per penny of fuel burned. And when we do this by dividing the temperature rise by the cost of the fuel in pennies, we actually see that fuel A is the best because this gives us the biggest temperature rise per penny of fuel burned. So in summary, the fuel A is the best overall because it gives the biggest temperature rise per penny of fuel burned. 
Now, changing tack somewhat, uh, this graph shows us the um, amount of fuel which is being burned on the left hand side against the uh, years along the bottom. And the question is why, when there's so much global interest in the environment and carbon footprints, is the amount of fossil fuel being burned still increasing? The reason is twofold. First, if we look at this graph, we can see that um, this graph almost mirrors the previous one in that the world population has grown enormously during that time. So there's been an increase in the world's population. And alongside that, there are some countries in the world like India and China and Brazil which have become increasingly industrialized over the last 20 or 30 years and therefore are using more fuel uh, than they ever did before. The final parts of this tutorial will look at how we can show what products are made when a fuel burns and to look at the word and the symbol equations for complete combustion of a hydrocarbon. That's when there is plenty of air or oxygen present. This diagram shows a classic science experiment which is used to show the products of combustion of a fuel. and in the burning fuel bottle we have for example some propane and the propane uh, when it burns produces gases which make their way up the apparatus along the tube into the first boiling tube here which is cooled down in uh, ice and water and contains a reagent called anhydrous copper sulfate which starts off white and then makes its way along into the second tube which contains lime water uh, which is a reagent for testing for carbon dioxide. Now, when the fuel is burnt, the suction pump sucks all those gases through the apparatus and the anhydrous copper sulfate turns from white to blue and the lime water turns from colourless to cloudy. And so, in summary, copper sulfate goes from white to blue. That shows that water is present. That's a reagent to test for water. The lime water goes from colours to cloudy, showing that carbon dioxide is present. That's a reagent for testing for carbon dioxide. So the products of combustion, uh, when there's complete combustion of a fuel, plenty of oxygen is carbon dioxide and water. If you ask for a word equation, the propane reacts with oxygen from the air to produce carbon dioxide and water, or water vapour. Uh, at a high level, though, you'd be expected to write a balanced symbol equation, given, for example, the formula of propane, which is C3H8. You'd start by writing the formulas of each of the reactants and the products, and then you'd need to balance the equation. Now, I think you can see that there are three carbons on the left-hand side and only one on the right-hand side. Therefore, we need to put a three in front of the CO2. And also on the left hand side there are eight hydrogens, whereas on the right hand side there are only two. So to balance that up we need to put a four in front of the H2O. When we count up the number of oxygens on the right hand side, you can see that there are three lots of two, which is six oxygens there, and four lots of one, which is four, making a total of ten oxygens. Therefore, we need to put a 5 in front of the O2 to say that there are 10 oxygens on the right-hand side. That's how to write the balanced equation for complete combustion of a fuel.